Good afternoon and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to see uh, folks from all over the country join us today. Uh, and we're very excited to share with you uh, the recent updates that we've made to the Flow MSV platform, uh, specifically the updates to the web app that uh, you all uh, are familiar with. So what I'd like to do is introduce myself, share some of the updates that we've made, and then kind of go into some of the details of what you can look forward to uh, this spring and this summer of 2022. Uh, my name is Jamie Welliver. I'm a recent hire at Flow MSV last fall, coming in as a, the VP of technology, also leading up the development for the, the web app platform and the, uh, uh, all of the, the recent uh, updates and, uh, and changes uh, can, can be blamed on me. And that's why I'm here to, to introduce uh, the, these changes, uh, some of the uh, share the functionality of some of the new features that we've introduced and give you uh, a sneak peek at uh, what to expect in the weeks and months uh, ahead. So thank you again for joining. And as Joyce said earlier, please feel free to drop any comments or questions in the chat box. We'll get to them at the, uh, the end of the presentation and we look forward to having a conversation with you all at that point. So without further ado, let's jump into what's new at Flow. And that would be a good point in time for me to be able to actually change the slide. There we go. So what I'll dive into is the, the new look. We've updated our user interface for the web app, as you probably have noticed, uh, hopefully um, all, all good on, on your end. Of course, if there are any concerns or comments about the changes we've made, we're all ears and always uh, eager to, to get feedback from y'all. So please let us know as uh, we make changes, uh, how, how it's impacting you in your day to day. If it's good, if it's bad, if you don't care, We'll take it all. Uh, so we'll go through uh, those changes to the user interface. Uh, it gave you a peek at some of the changes that we've made to the dispatch feed uh, and then showcase what is the, the biggest new feature for us and that's our data dashboard. And through there, what you can do with an assignment methodology that we've introduced to help you sort and tackle uh, uh, updating and managing uh, the vast amount of pre-planned data that you've accumulated over the year. Uh, and as well, how to manage those views and export them for either integrations to third-party RMSs or for your own uh, in analysis uh, via Excel. So let's switch over. What I'm doing right now is we've poked into the Addison Fire Protection District. Uh, it's one of our customers that has a, a very a large data set that I think showcases uh, uh, some of the, the, the best features that we've updated uh, in these recent weeks. So as you'll see, the look and feel is slightly different. The functionality remains the same. Uh, we have a map view that shares your pre-planned data using polygon uh, tiles overlaid uh, using the Google Maps system. Just as before, when you click on a pre-plan, your images, your annotated images appear uh, in the, the banner on the bottom. And then we've refreshed and tried to clean up uh, the, the data view on the right here. And you'll see we've included, um, we've cleaned up the hydrant view so that you have a quick view as to which hydrants are attached to a pre-plan as well as cleaned up the, the way that the data is represented to try and improve readability, uh, especially if you're viewing these in a tough book in the truck uh, on, on the way to the scene, or even just trying to quickly scan a neighborhood and, and determine which uh, pre-plans uh, need attention. So you'll see here, the same data set exists as before in terms of what data types you can assign to pre-plans and update. And then one of the larger improvements that we've made with this web, with this map view is how we represent dispatch data. Uh, the biggest of which that I'm proud to introduce is highlighting which pre-plans uh, have, I mean, which dispatch, uh, which dispatch notifications have pre-plans associated with the location. As well as that, we have a link out to Google Maps for those that are using the Tough Books or a similar tablet uh, a web view in the field. You can click on that and based on the address that was provided in the dispatch, provide directions via Google Maps uh, to the location. Right now, my response will be a little delayed from Cambridge to Illinois, but you see that the, uh, the, the address that you get there with, within each uh, dispatch notification will sync up from your location to the Google Maps dropped pin and provide directions and such. So when you highlight the, uh, when you select a notification, what happens now is you'll see the selected dispatch above 
and uh, the information that you would typically see uh, before and try and try and provide uh, uh, an easier experience as you're navigating through uh, the dispatch notifications and to simply clear out from that view just hit the top tab of that dispatch notifications and it resets So from there, I'd like to introduce the dashboard. And this is a phased uh, rollout of a entirely new feature set that we have here at Flow. And what we've introduced is a table view for all of your pre-planned data and introduced as well a new feature that will allow you to assign locations and the responsibility for updating pre-planned information out throughout your team so that you don't have to handle this management on your own. So you'll see the updated navigation. We have the map view that you're familiar with and a new dashboard view. And as we select over here, you'll see it's a pretty standard web table view. Uh, we've tried to select the most important information to uh, uh, provide a simple view upfront and to not overload the screen as much as possible. I'll go through some of the highlights of the changes we've made. Uh, we have, of course, your address, which provides a uh, business name, street address, city, et cetera. And this also, this box here, if you click on any of these addresses, it will load that pre-plan in the map view. And you can simply cycle back and forth between the dashboard and the map view, just clicking the link to the address. Uh, we have the lot number, which uh, some folks use as the unit number. Some are using it as the business name to try and uh, uh, highlight the business names uh, more effectively on the map. Just like a lot of the features we have, we leave that up to you as to how you implement that. Uh, we have a new um, uh, field, data field called district. And this will be uh, uh, analogous to your, your house number, uh, your fire district, however, uh, that, that, that is described in, in uh, your department. You will then be able to go into a location and update the district type here, located below the lot number. We've also introduced a new data type called high hazard, which allows you to provide a high level labeling of a location so that it can call out to those just viewing the pre-plan whether or not you have identified it as a particularly hazardous location. So let's say you have a, a, a industrial site with a lot of uh, hazardous material, or you have an area where the, there's a lot of, um, there's restricted or dangerous access or, Anything that you may uh, deem as hazardous, you can then uh, reflect that on a location by selecting high hazard here. And I'll showcase this in a uh, test environment. We're currently live in, in a uh, real-time data view of Addison Gilbert, so I don't want to uh, uh, manipulate their data too much as we just take a quick look at the new features here uh, in the web app. We also have, uh, we're highlighting uh, a column called image annotations. And what this is going to do is to allow you to view how many images you have for a location and then how many of them are annotated because we've discovered that the real value of sharing images is not just, you know, this is a picture of the building, but then this is a picture and is it annotated as an A, B, C? Does it showcase uh, any of the uh, different callouts that you've deemed important for, for that image? And you'll see here for say Prologis here at, at 10 North Mitchell Court, uh, they have nine images, five of which are annotated, which all then gets computed into a completion score that we've introduced. Now this completion score is broken down here by simply clicking on the button in the completion column. And what you'll see here is the breakdown of data points and how they attribute to the Flow MSP completion score. And right now we obviously have an address. We footprinted the building by tracing the outline so that we can accomplish the flow, the required flow calculations. And then we assess how many building data points are associated with this. So this comes down to how we describe the occupancy type, the construction type, roof type, et cetera. And you see right now, uh, this location simply has the owner phone content information. So there's some you know, in, uh, some, some left uh, uh, data points that need to be filled in in order for this pre-planned completion to be considered uh, 100%. Uh, and one of the things, because of our discovery of how valuable image annotations are, uh, we've weighted image annotations as a pretty high aspect to this completion score. So because they have five of their nine, because they have five Im annotated images, that's the threshold to, to max out 
at 50%. So 50% of the completion score weighs in on the amount of annotated images that they have. And uh, that is why right here, they have 50% of the score completed uh, for a total of 80%. And so for all of these uh, locations, uh, this score is automatically tabulated, and then it is filterable by this completion score. And now why is that? Why did we focus on being able to uh, uh, quickly view this completion score? And that comes down to the idea that when you first start with Flow MSP, you might have 500, 1,000, 4,000 locations that have been automatically um, aggregated through either building department data, historical data, whatever the third-party source that you've brought data to Flow MSP with. And it just becomes very, it becomes a burden to try and tackle which locations are important to tackle first. How do I identify where I need to update my information for pre-plan completion? And so what we've done is we've introduced a filter view that allows you to select only the locations that have whatever you determine to be the, the most missing data, right? So let's say we, we want to find the real low scores here. And now we can see that we have still a good chunk that maybe have only been traced. We've only provided the building address. We don't know things like the occupancy type. We don't have images. We don't have image annotations. So because these have a building trace, so if we go to the subway here, it has the building trace, it has an address, hydrants uh, associated with that location have been linked, but that's it. So we can't really consider that pre-plan to be uh, reaching its full potential and providing the most valuable information uh, for response. So therefore, we have it at 25%. Now, what do we do with that? Well, you know now which locations are missing data. Now you need to gather the help to go out and fill in the holes in your data. And that's where we introduce the assignment functionality. And for that, I'm gonna switch over to my own test environment, just as a caveat, this is what I use to develop on. So the data is a little wonky, it's a little incomplete, and it represents uh, the city of Cambridge, which isn't a flow customer, but is um, where I happily reside. So here we are just outside Boston, and we're looking at the Kendall Square area. And let's say we go to the dashboard and try and do the same thing and identify locations that are really missing uh, data. We bring the slider down, say, okay, let's find the ones that are missing the most. And we'll see here we have, because I've been updating this, we have some existing assignment functionality, but let's go this, let's filter by the last time it was reviewed. And this last reviewed name and date will, will show who is the last person to update a pre-plan location. And that includes the creation. So we have a few pre-plans here that I created this morning, uh, one of which I've marked as high hazard, but the rest, I haven't really done anything else. We've traced the building, we've introduced a business name and address, but we haven't added images. We haven't included any of the uh, building data. So let's get some help filling in the holes here. And what we can do is just select the locations using the check boxes on the left. We can select assign three locations and we try and get some help. So I'm gonna tap on our CEO, Jason Marvel, to come in here and help us out here. We're gonna give him a due date of uh, next month. I'm gonna be pretty generous with his time here. And then I establish a, it's a little open-ended, but what we've introduced is five different status values. And you can use this as you wish. We do not provide uh, an opinion as to what happens when you select open in progress needs feedback, except for complete. And I'll introduce what we do with that next. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, uh, Jason, these assignments are open. Select save. And now when Jason logs in, he'll be able to come into the dashboard. He'll be able to go here select the assigned to value and say, okay, let's find the ones that are assigned to Jason Marble and let's find the ones that are open because these are the ones that have been recently assigned to me that I haven't touched. Okay, so Jason's here, he's in the dashboard, he has his assignments and he's going to go to Merck Pharma here at First Street. He's going to jump to it in the map and you'll see here, it's already been selected as a high hazard, but we don't have any, any building information type. So we'll edit the location, he'll go through, he can select 
the different types. Perhaps he wants to upload some annotated images. He can add some notes, however else he wants to use the Flowmitsby platform to uh, build out the pre-plan uh, uh, data profile for this location, and he can select save. And voila, the, the place is updated. Now here, Jason has a choice. He can see here that this location currently has an active assignment box. And I will note that this only shows up if you are an admin. So if such as myself here, I am an admin for the Welliver Test FD Flow MSP account, or if you are the individual that has been assigned a location. And I will say that we have um, unlocked this feature for admin and planner. If you have a view-only user account, because you cannot update the pre-plans, we've restricted the ability to assign individuals a location unless they have that admin or planner user privilege. And because Jason is a, a planner for here, he will be able to come in and update the assignment. And what, what he can do here, uh, and because I'm not currently Jason Marvel, I can't update it in this view. But if he were to go back here to the dashboard view, we will we'll revisit the locations that are updated to him. And I want to, let's say, we'll, we'll reassign this to myself so I can show you uh, this feature here. Go back to see Jimmy Welliver, Mark Pharma. And what I can do here is let's say this location was assigned to me. I've just made the updates. I have a choice. I can update the assignment and let's say, uh, I've touched on it, but I'm not yet done, but I want to let people know that I'm working on it. Maybe I went there and I wasn't able to get inside. I wasn't able to get to the boiler room or get to the security panels, that sort of thing. I wasn't able to get the information I needed, but I got a first start. So my next shift next week, whenever I'll get to it, I'll get to it. But I can update the assignment to be in progress so that I can let my captain know, hey, I'm on it. I've started my work here. Now, let's say I've started it, but uh, I have questions about the type of uh, information that's needed, or um, I have concerns over the, uh, the, the quality of the data that I've collected. I'm not sure if I got the roof type right, et cetera. I can go here and I can select needs feedback. And what's neat there is that as an admin, similar to what we just saw uh, when filtering for assignments assigned to you, you can then go to the dashboard and simply say, all right, which assignments currently need feedback? So as you, as the manager, or as the, uh, the, the person in charge of pre-plans can go and view which individuals have outstanding assignments that still need touch. So I need to touch base with Tom, Jason, and then I need to revisit um, that location that I just touched and figure out what, what's going on, where do I need help? In a similar vein, let's say it's done. I've updated it. I'm, I feel confident that this pre-plan is to the completion that I desired. I can simply update the assignment as complete. And when that occurs, that box disappears because it's we don't really need to, to call out that location's assignment because it is now complete. And when we return to the dashboard view, what happens is if we go here, through here and we say, all right, which ones are complete, when they were due, and when they were updated. And we can see here that uh, I've updated a location that Tom had uh, marked as complete 3.5. I updated on 3.25. When we export this data, we'll be able to see both the last time that uh, a, an assignment was completed and the last time a location was reviewed. Now with that, I'll go on to the next uh, feature that we're introducing, which is expanded data filtering and export tools. And we've touched on the data filtering to a degree, uh, but what I didn't show you is uh, the expanded view that we uh, have provided in this dashboard uh, section. Now, right now, what we are viewing is a limited view of all the data that you have for the dashboards. All of the building data types that you typically view within uh, the individual pre-plan is accessible in the dashboard. We've marked it as hidden uh, right off the bat simply because when you select it, it becomes a little overwhelming and trying to view 20 or so columns in one 10, uh, 1920 by 1080 screen can start to get a little overwhelming, but the option is there. And what you can do is certainly you can sort by you know which type of uh, roof material, roof construction, whichever building data type you want. And then you can take the columns that you've selected here and produce a CSV. 
Now, this is very powerful for those of you that have a third-party RMS that you might want to import or export data from a Flow MSP. And right now, and it's also good for archiving uh, your changes and saving them so that you can format them and present them as you wish for perhaps ISO or reporting up to town management. However, with, however you want to use your data, we are, are giving you access to it in the most raw form so that you can manipulate it and play with it as you see fit. And to do that, all you have to do is select which columns you want to produce in the CSV. And let's say we just want to provide building type building data types and the location. We don't necessarily want to include all of the pre-plan information as to which have floor plans, high hazards, and the assignment. We download the CSV, and the CSV is, that is produced only has the location and the building types. On the same page, maybe we just care about the assignments and we want to keep track of what type of assignments historically have been uh, being touched on. We can deselect building, we can select assignment, and voila, what you have here is simply the address information and assignment data. The same thing for pre-planned data. Uh, now, what this does is touches on something that uh, we're working on in a, in a second phase, and that is expanded uh, configurable data views. What we've done is provided an, opinionate, an opinionated approach towards uh, uh, viewing and, and um, uh, kind of playing with your data in this dashboard. And we want to offer the ability for you to um, create your own views and save them for future use. So one of the ways we're going to do that is be able to provide the ability to, at the, in a similar vein, select columns, select which completion type. So let's say we want to have a persistent view that says, let's just find the pre-plans that are less than 50%. You'll select 50%, you'll select the data types you want to view in those columns. And then here on the right will be a button to say, save as a configured view so that you can reselect it in the future. The same thing for being able to, to save and view assignments to an individual. I want to be able to view my assignments that are currently open. The same idea, we'll have a button here that will allow, allow you to save a configured view and you can name it as such. So I'll name it as assignments to me that are open. And so next time I go to the dashboard, saves you a few clicks and uh, kind of expands on the navigator, uh, the, the discoverability of data that we've uh, introduced here with this, with this initial view. So we've covered the new look uh, and updates to the user interface, some of the uh, improvements we made to the dispatch feed, uh, what the dashboard view is and how to interact with it, and introduce the idea of assignments and different ways that you can um, identify locations and split out the responsibility of updating those locations amongst your team, as well as the ability to filter and export these tools. And what gets me really jazzed is to introduce what's next. So within the dashboard, we talked about the configurable data views to be able to save the different types of uh, filters that you uh, will be able to, to share and uh, use on your own. We're going to introduce an assignment notification methodology. Perhaps you have users or you, you have members of your department that aren't logging into Flow MSB every day. That's fine. Uh, we still want you to be able to leverage the assignment tool and have it be used. And we can give you the option to uh, alert your users via their email that's associated with the, the user account. And of course, this is going to be an opt-in. We don't want to start spamming people unnecessarily. So we'll give you the, the choice to select whether or not you want to alert your users and then give them updates similar to you know, any other type of notifications that they might receive via email to say, hey, uh, Captain Welliver has assigned you this location. Here's the, the due date. Or hey, uh, Firefighter Marvel has updated this location. It says Mark needs feedback, that sort of notification. So we're looking forward to introducing that uh, this summer. Uh, and, and most uh, importantly will be as we start leveraging the assignment tool, we wanna see, we wanna be able to tap into the data of assignments, especially as we go year by year. And from here, you'll be able to go to a location and view all the different uh, assignment updates that have occurred for a specific location. So let's say you have uh, a big office complex that has required a lot of updates over the years, you'll be able to go through and in a tabular view, similar to the dashboard, see update by update who has gone in and updated what 
uh, through these assignments uh, throughout the years, which we feel will be impactful as you try to produce reports and data assessments for, uh, uh, say, town management, ISO, whatever the, your need may be for reporting. Uh, and it's similar to the dashboard view that we have for pre-plans, we'll introduce a tabular view for all your hydrant data for your reporting needs as well. And this we uh, look forward to syncing with our water app project in the months and quarters ahead. So lots of movement going on through high level data views in the, uh, in the months ahead. Within the pre-plan and dispatch views, uh, we are going to introduce uh, the ability to export to PDF. Uh, this is going to be good for off-site data storage, disaster management, shareability. We want you to be able to provide uh, uh, for each individual pre-plan a single PDF that will give you the ability to download the annotated images and all of the high-level building data that you've accumulated for that pre-plan. So we'll be releasing that in the coming week, and you'll see that uh, existing as a button within that right column of each pre-planned view. Uh, we'll also be making improvements to the image upload and file management system. We understand some of the, the sharp edges that currently exist with our annotator, with the image uploader, as well as the ability to quickly tag and customize which tags are applied to images and PDFs. So lots of uh, moving pieces there that we're working on and we'll be uh, looking forward to introduce uh, towards the end of the spring, early summer of 2022. We'll also be uh, improving the uh, how you can view and interact with dispatch data. We'll be introducing uh, a data view within the map. So similar to how you can view hydrants and pre-planned polygons, we'll be uh, giving you the option to, uh, to, to create pin drop locations for each dispatch to be able to give you a high level view of an area of where your units are responding to and what that unit is responding for. As well, we'll be able to provide you an expanded view of dispatch data beyond the current uh, uh, one week that we have in the uh, current view. When Flow MSP was built, we wanted to provide a quick and easy way for you to link uh, uh, ongoing and recent calls to pre-plans. And as we uh, expand our services to be a true data management tool for, these, for, for, for you guys, we want you to be able to align your response data with your pre-plan data for both uh, assessment for training, as well as uh, year-end reporting to see, hey, I have locations that my, my guys have responded to maybe a dozen times that we don't maybe have the, the best pre-plan for. That is another way to leverage the uh, Flow MSP platform to let you uh, figure out which locations your resources should be aligned to update uh, the pre-plans for. And yes, so with that, I'll open the floor for questions. And as always, if, if not now, uh, we're always available to chat and are very excited to, to talk with you guys because our development of this product is guided by you, our customer. There's no other way to do it. We don't want to uh, be uh, uh, spending our resources and wasting your time on stuff that uh, you're not going to use. So let's have a conversation. Let's figure out what tools you're looking for the most, and that will help us guide our product roadmap in the months and years to come. So, Joy, I'll open it up to you for uh, to relay any questions, and uh, I'm happy to open it up for Jason, for Joy, for Don, anyone else in the Flow team that wants to chip in uh, and uh, pick up the conversation. Thank you, guys. All right. Anybody who has a question can feel free to either type it in the chat if you're more comfortable that way, or you may unmute yourself at this time and ask your question. Don't be shy. Hey, Jamie. It's Don. Um, can you just real quick just show them the urgent to do and the update status? Just let them know it's automated. Absolutely, Don. Thank you for calling that out. So one of the ways that we've, um, uh, one, one feature that we've introduced to help you identify locations that need the uh, attention the most and upfront is uh, introduce a status value of whether or not it's due, urgent, or updated. And what that does, it simply looks at the last time a location was reviewed. So if it was over a year ago, or within, uh, it, let's say this one is due. Uh, this was updated within a year, but uh, we're looking at maybe it's uh, 
more than three months old. So at a certain point, or I'm sorry, more than nine months old at a certain point, we want to make sure we go back, revisit that location, check it out, or even just review it here within Flow and quickly update it uh, as we see fit. Uh, we also have the ability to say something is urgent and that's when stuff gets over a year old and it hasn't even been updated or touched we just want to give you the ability to provide a new uh, filtered view that uh, highlights the locations that might need your attention most so let's say in addison we want to find stuff that's more than a year old and is really missing information and there we go we can narrow in the data to help us find the spots that need help the most Jamie, I have a question here. Will the future PDF functionality give us the ability to download the entire pre-plan? Yes, and that's what we're excited to do because I understand that you know internet access isn't always 100%. Uh, outages do occur in areas. So to be able to, for disaster management and also for shareability uh, between members or PD or the public, you want to be able to have a, a shareable format, which is why the PDF exists. It's the portable document format. And so we'll be able to download the PDF that lists the address, business name, all of the information that you view that you can see here so if we go to Porter Pipe and Supply, this PDF will include everything from business name, the address, the lot number, the hydrants, and the, the information associated with that hydrant, the building data, and most importantly, the photos, so that you can have a hard copy of all this information uh, for your records. Absolutely. Another question here from Ramona. Um, is there a way to adjust the volume or tone when an alert is generated? The station they're training with uses Active 911 and that allows changes to these settings? Yes, thank you for introducing that because we are currently in development of these updates as we speak and we're looking at less than a month out. You'll be able to select um, what type of tone is highlighted and uh, just for everyone's uh, benefit, we're talking about the mobile application here. So to be able to uh, uh, choose which tone is used and then also we've worked with the, the app store to configure it in a way so that you can select Flow MSP as an application to alert you regardless of your your notification level. So if you're going to bed and you want to mute all your texts, Facebook notifications, New York Times breaking news alerts, but you still want dispatch alerts, we'll have uh, that feature unlocked so that you get the notification tone regardless of your um, uh, notification settings. Of course, we're sensitive to that need. Perhaps you want to mute notifications no matter what, you'll still be able to select that level of notification ability. And uh, again, we're looking at releasing that within a month. Absolutely, Ramona, and thank you for for bringing that up. That's been a, a consistent request that we're finally happy to we're happy to finally uh, deliver to you guys. And another question: When will the PDF export be released? Uh, that's uh, the coming week, right before we hopped on this. That's what I'm currently uh, grinding on to, uh, to to release for everybody. Uh, we're introducing it as a single PDF export per pre-plan because we have users anywhere between the, the 500 to 5,000 ability. We want to be able to provide you a batch export version, but because of those high-end users, uh, we're focusing on individual exports uh, right now uh, to be able to provide bulk uh, exports via PDF is something that will require a, a little more time on our end that we'll be introducing uh, probably uh, mid-summer this year. Jamie, we've covered a lot of different information today. For those who are maybe kind of feeling a little bit overwhelmed, what would be a good first step to get started in using the new tools you've described today? That's a great question, Joy. Uh, Similar to uh, what we did with uh, my test account here, I would go in and start um, playing with the, the, the filter views that we've introduced. Uh, right now you can reset the filters here by just deselecting them and start taking a look at the uh, completion ratings here. Uh, you can use the column sort by feature by just selecting the header of each column and try and find the ones that are missing the most data and then uh, try and assess where uh, your data points are um, uh, most lacking. There, there might be some departments that didn't prioritize filling out the building data, but are finding value in, in truly understanding which places are alarmed, sprinklered, understanding the roof and occupancy type. And that's the sort of thing where I feel the, uh, the assignment um, uh, functionality can be leveraged to help you tackle these needs in a shorter amount of time. 
So you can, you can, you can point out to your guys, maybe it's drill night and you have a training night um, that you haven't filled in yet. Be like, all right, we're going to create assignments for everyone to go out on drill night and, and update some of these locations. Let's go to the school and figure out what the roof material is. Let's go and, and create more image annotations for a specific site. Maybe you have good aerial ABC um, uh, photographs, but you haven't gotten inside to the sensitive areas uh, for that, that will be really helpful uh, in your response. And that you can do by just simply selecting the top level, uh, the column header for image annotations to see which ones have it and which ones are missing it. Another question here, is there a way to edit or change the text in the drop down boxes? That's a great question. Um, right, right now, uh, it is not. Right now, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, what we're talking about is when you go to an area and being able to edit a location and select, I believe the question is, can we expand upon, let's say the occupancy types in this list? Can we expand upon the construction type and the roof type? Right now, we are not set up to provide that 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 level of configurability. However, we are very open to expanding these selections based off your feedback. So if there is a standard that we're missing in, in construction type or roof material, we wanna be able to bring that value across all our customer base. So please um, always use our open line of communication and let us know what type of uh, uh, data types we can update and uh, where we can improve the uh, information that, that you're trying to uh, bring to each of your pre-plans. Pre uh, on that token, another item that we're currently in progress that I'm excited to share about is we are improving the annotator tool this year. It's one of my uh, biggest focuses because of how important it is to providing, um, to building a uh, detail-rich pre-plan and also because it needs the most help within our application. I'll be very br uh, blunt about that. And uh, in that tool, we will be expanding the icon library um, so that there are more options and that there it is also more discoverable instead of just an infinite list of icons. So do look forward to uh, seeing those improvements coming in the months ahead. We have about five more minutes of our scheduled time. I'm happy to answer any more questions you guys might have. And again, as always, I'll bring up the email here uh, to get in touch with Don uh, on our customer ops team. Drop us a line at support at flowmsp.com. And I want everyone to know that those conversations, we see this, we see these requests come in, we track them, we assess them. And when we go to update our platform, we want to be able to, to, to close the loop and reach out to you guys. Don's going to send you an email, bring you up, send you a phone call. I'm sure you all have had great conversations with them so far. Uh, I want you to know that I'm listening, we're listening, and we're constantly iterating on our product to address the feedback that you bring to us. And so every comment, no matter how small or big, Super valuable, super valuable to us and, and very much appreciated. Also, as a heads up to the group, tomorrow you will be receiving an email from Flow about our revamped strategy and training. So this is an opportunity for your department to have your own training portal within Affinity Canvas. So if you have anybody new at your department who needs to be trained on Flow, or if you yourself just want a refresher on how to do everything well, you can request access to your own training portal, which you will then have forever. And you can use it as frequently as you need uh, to refresh on training for anybody in your department. So more to come on that tomorrow. Matt, I see your question. That is a great question. This release in the coming week will not have that, but that configurability, that sort of feature build out is in, in, in line with the other configurable options that I mentioned related to the dashboard. If you think about it in a technical development uh, view, uh, to be able to unlock configurability within the dashboard aligns with being able to unlock configurability with something, say, the PDF exporter. So that is a great idea and is something that is on our radar and will be released subsequently to the initial release of PDF export. So to recap, PDF export will give you all the data for now, but if you want to go back and export a location without say all the hydrant locations or maybe not all the photos, you will be able to select the individual data types that you want associated with that export. Great question. Thank you for bringing that up. 
Okay, well, if there aren't any questions, I'll uh, let us wrap there. Thank you all for your time today. We really appreciate you coming in and uh, taking a look at what's new at Flow. I'm very excited to bring you new features in the, in the weeks and months ahead. And as always, drop us a line with any comments, suggestions, or ideas. Thanks again, guys.